If I told you there was one tool that would make you an overall better maker, prevent a lot of the mistakes that you make, and also make you a better designer, and what if it was free? Well, there's usually one thing holding you back, or at least it was for me. I'm not sure I'll be able to make this video in time, so I'll make this intro short. I'm close to reaching 100,000 subscribers here on YouTube, and I can't tell you how long I've been waiting for that day. But there's a small issue. I made this subscriber counter a long time ago. It's kind of like a workshop happy device. I see my subscriber count. The only problem is that there is not enough room to show 100,000. So I'm making a new device today with the tool that kind of changed everything for me. And I'll be using some random things I have lying around. And hopefully I can have something assembled in time to celebrate 100k with a new subscriber counter. But I would never be able to make this without this tool. So I'll take you with me. So this device could potentially act as a smart device, but for now I just need to hustle to make the subscriber count thing work. And maybe a clock, because I mean, come on, why not? Usually when you want to make something, I suppose you make a drawing on paper in 2D. Like this, this is my 2D drawing. Now, what if I was able to extrude that into a 3D piece? Well, with a CAD program, that's exactly what you do. I draw exactly as I would on paper, with straighter lines, of course. And then I press one button to extrude and tell it how far I want it to extrude. Press enter and I have a 3D part, just like that. Now, if I want to draw again, I create a new sketch from whatever plane I want to, and I can do the same thing over and over again. Now, of course, this is the basic idea of it, and you can always go a lot deeper into it. But all it took for me was this basic idea of turning a 2D sketch into a 3D piece to, to really start digging into it. Reaching a vanity goal doesn't really matter. But it does, it really does. It's the first award in the YouTube game. If you start a YouTube channel and get bitten like I did, your life kind of changes. It's an addiction, not unlike other addictions. I wake up in the morning and open my phone and the first thing I looked at for the longest time was my YouTube studio app. In the beginning, just a new subscriber meant the world. And sometimes I lost one overnight and it was a bit devastating. This feeling came over me like it was a personal thing. And that part has been an even bigger journey. It's kind of like growing thicker and thicker skin with the amount of subscribers you get. So here's the plan. This is an LCD screen from Waveshare and it's the perfect size. And if the other subscriber counter I made was the cheapest one ever, this might be the opposite because on the back there's a Raspberry Pi. I could probably do it with something else, but I don't have anything else. So this is what I'm going with. And once I have a version of a Raspberry OS installed on the SD card in the Raspberry Pi, I should have a very tiny computer with a very tiny display. A 3D printed case was my plan and with some experience of how my procedure looks like, I had to get the 3D printer started because the first version probably won't work. But even if it does, I'm not sure I will make it in time. There is another reason to learn CAD and this might actually be the coolest trick ever. Say you have a design like this and you want to show it to the customer. Well, in Fusion 360 that I use, I can actually export my design as an USDC file. I can send it over to my phone and then open it in augmented reality. That way I can see my piece of furniture in real life, like what it would look like standing where it's supposed to go. Now, how cool is that? I mean, that feature alone, it's just worth learning CAD for. So I've printed this. Oh. <laughs> Oh, and if I didn't mention it, after drawing something in Fusion 360, I can actually export it to my 3D print slicer program and just print it from there. It's super easy. So that alone is just a reason to learn CAD, I suppose. <laughs> well, what if you don't have a 3D printer, pal? You could always use PCBWay and they're the sponsor of this video and you can have them 3D print it for you. Because that's what they do. They help you make what you want. PCBs, 3D prints and CNC machining. I mean, what's not to like? So go give PCBWay.com a visit and let them know I sent you. And if you use the link in the description, you get $5 off your first order. Now it looks good, but I want to make some tweaks to it. 
And there are also some features I need, like I need a way for the display to actually stay in there. So I'm thinking I'll make some small holes, that way I can insert threaded inserts and then just screw it in place with some small 3D printed clasps. I also need a back panel to cover it up and I'll do the same thing there with some threaded inserts. A logo at the bottom and I also want to tweak the feet a bit to make them look a bit nicer. And then print again. So while I'm waiting for parts, I have to get on with the next part of this build, which is the software. And for that, I'm going to use ChatGPT. Because why not? <laughs> I think I now have the longest ongoing conversation with ChatGPT that I've ever had. And since time is short, this will have to do. All right, so this is what it currently looks like. And it's not much, but I, I suppose it's okay. I'm going to change the sizes of the fonts a bit. But for now, it's good. It is fetching the numbers of the amount of subscribers from the YouTube API and the really dumb thing is that after you pass 100,000 it's just going to show the increments in thousands. So this is basically a really dumb idea to start with, but I made it anyways. But since it's a Raspberry Pi, I could probably add a bunch of other features, but I don't have the time for it right now. But uh, I did one thing. So when you click it, it's going to just display the clock. So it's basically a really expensive clock. It also displays the day uh, and the time on the subscriber page. What a dumb idea. <laughs> what a dumb idea. The parts printed fine and I could see what it would look like in the end, but I was still waiting for an angled USB-C adapter that would let me attach the power in an angle. Right, so today's Saturday and when I woke up this morning, this had happened. And according to the app, I'm currently at 99,046. Tomorrow's Sunday, which means no post and Monday the parts will come from Amazon, but they usually come in the afternoon, so I'm not sure. I will make it in time. So I have a backup plan. I will increase the size of the box just a bit. And because of that, I think I'll be able to fit the wires I have right now. Because the parts I'm waiting for are these angled connectors that will allow me to attach the USB-C in an angle without the power cord sticking straight up. So I will print a new bigger box and maybe I can finish it in time. But on the upside, I get to show another cool feature of drawing in CAD which is that I can actually go in there and change the dimensions of the entire box without ruining anything. And everything adapts because of parametric modeling, which basically means I have all the measurements connected with each other. So when I change one metric, everything else adapts. And that makes it very easy printing a new version without the hassle of redrawing everything. So I'll start this print and I'll update you tomorrow, uh, Sunday, to see where I'm at. All right. Sunday came and the print from Saturday looked not good. The two colors had mixed in print, so I started a new print. Also, the filament I'd used was a bit too shiny for my liking, so I set up a new print for Sunday. And the counter was at 99,300, so I still had some time for another print. Then the uptick in subscribers slowed off a bit and Monday morning I was at 99,500, so I knew I would be able to make it in time. Before the packages arrived, I could attach the threaded inserts with the soldering iron. I also upgraded the cooling of the Raspberry Pi with a fan and some heat sinks, just as a precaution. And if there's anyone out there who wants to make this project, which I don't think you should, but if you still want to, I'll upload the 3D prints and the parts I used to make it. I'll also post the code I used on my GitHub with links to everything down in the description. One of the really cool features of learning CAD, especially with woodworking, is that I get to see any potential mistakes before I make them because when lining things up, I will see how I need to make it in order for it to work. And that has helped me so many times. I use Fusion 360, but there are many other programs out there that all do basically the same thing. So I hope I convinced some of you to get into it and learn CAD, because I promise you it's really rewarding. 
On Tuesday, I remade the box to the smaller version now that I had all the adapters and I also updated the back panel with some vent holes. I just forgotten about that previously in all the haste. Okay, the new version is done, which I think it looks better than the bigger one. Time to hook it up and see if it actually works. It should work. That's a good sign. Got the raspberry loading. Raspberry pie. Yeah. Good stuff. And the clock is working and it's updated. Great. Now uh, I suppose I, I'll just wait. It's Friday morning and the count is at 99,964, which hopefully means it won't happen during night, which was something I was a bit scared of, but we'll see. We'll see when we get there, but you know, yeah, it'll be, it'll be good. This isn't just a vanity number. It's a celebration of years of work leading somewhere. I think everyone should have some kind of acknowledgement counter. We all deserve it. You and everyone else watching made it possible, and I guess that leaves me one thing to say. Thank you. <gasps> it's there! <laughs>